be a little difficult to get this video done in five minutes, but I'm going to try. So I put a lot of stuff on this board uh, first, and we'll go through it a step at a time. But first, I want to go to the Desmos online graphing calculator to show you exactly what it is we're working on. Uh, f of x is this function, uh, f of x equals x squared, and we're supposed to uh, f find a Riemann sum for the area under the curve from 0 to 1. Uh, the red area is the actual area under the curve. The green area is uh, what appears when I have three rectangles or three subintervals. But if I increase the number of subintervals, see how I'm increasing n? The number of rectangles is getting more and more. And the overlap or the overestimate is getting smaller and smaller as that the number of rectangles gets uh, real big. We can see down here that the Riemann sum and the definite integral are getting closer and closer to each other. Okay, so the idea is, I'm going to stop sharing, is for us to divide the interval from 0 to 1 into n rectangles and then come up with a, a summation notation to represent that the area or the sum of the areas of all those rectangles and then let the number of rectangles approach infinity. That's what a Riemann sum is and that's... Uh, where a definite and integral definition comes from. So if we let a equal zero, the left-hand endpoint, b equal one, the right-hand endpoint, we can calculate the width of one interval as the length of the entire interval, b minus a divided by the number of intervals. Oh, or in our case, one minus zero over n, one over n is what w is. Okay, that's the width of one of these rectangles right here. Okay. Now we need something to represent the height of that rectangle. And you can use a right-hand endpoint, a left-hand endpoint, uh, a midpoint of the interval to calculate the height of a rectangle, uh, or any point in between or in the interval. Uh, but the, as the number of rectangles approaches infinity, uh, the sums of all these rectangles is going to approach the true area under the curve. So what have I done here? How do I find x sub i? Well, think about it. If we're starting at the left-hand endpoint and we want to know a coordinate for the right-hand endpoint, I have to add on, start at zero and add on one width, uh, which takes us to, in the case of this picture, one-third. Uh, x sub 2 would be 0 plus 2 widths, and the ith right-hand endpoint would be 0 plus i of these widths, or i over n. Uh, over here, we're calculating the area of specific rectangles. To calculate the area of a rec the first rectangle, we take f of x sub 1, which would be this little distance right here, and multiplying it by a width. But the height of that rectangle at x sub 1 is what you get when you plug x sub 1 into the function, which is x squared. So uh, x sub 1 we saw is 1 over n. 1 over n squared times w would be a representation for the area of this first rectangle right here. And remember, w is 1 over n, so we're going to substitute that in later. And then similarly for a sub 2, a sub i, now we're generalizing, would be f of x sub i times the width of the rectangle. And we know that x sub i is i over n. We'd square that to get the height of this uh, generalized rectangle and multiply that by the width, which is 1 over n. And we use summation notation to say we're going to add the areas of all these rectangles together. So we're saying the sum from i equals 1 to n of i over n, the quantity squared, that's the uh, height of the rectangle, times the width. So here's what we've ended up with when we simplify this. Now, you have to know some of the uh, theorems re in relation to summation notation. I, the letter n is just a constant. 
So you could have 20 rectangles, 100 rectangles, a million rectangles. N is just the number of rectangles. So there is a theorem that says I can move this constant 1 over N cubed in front of the summation symbol. So to generalize this, or actually to, to find the limit, uh, we need an expression for this right here. And we're actually going to take the limit as n approaches infinity. Uh, so you need to know this formula right here. A way to write the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared without summation notation. And this is it right here. And, and you can experiment. Uh, find the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared and let n equal 3. What's 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared? You'll see that this formula works. So on to board 3, I've got the sum from i equals 1 to n with a 1 over n cubed out front of i over n, whoops, I'm sorry, of i squared. Took me out the n cubed out front. But that I squared can be replaced with, uh, let's go back to this board. It can be replaced with N times N plus 1 times 2N plus 1 all over 6. And if you simplify this, I'm not going to go through that. Multiplying all that stuff together, uh, you you end up getting this: two n cubed plus three n squared plus n all over six n cubed. Now, what we want to do is take the limit of this as n approaches infinity. Now, you might recognize how to do that right away. If you don't, the key is to divide every term in the numerator and denominator by n cubed, the highest degree, so that you can get something that looks like this. 3 over n plus uh, 1 over n squared all over 6. And now as n approaches infinity, these fractions approach 0. So the limit is 2 6 or 1 3rd. OK. Uh, I could have spent a little more time on that, but we're running out of